So now we're going to look at a weak acid strong base titration, which is a little bit harder than a strong acid strong base. Not harder, just a little more involved. Um, so let's see. So if we scroll down, we can look at our four points. We need to calculate pH for in the titration curve. Um, so if we had a weak acid, before we add any strong base, all we have here is a weak acid. So we'll have to find the pH for weak acid. Uh, which is different than when we find the pH of a strong acid. For a weak acid, we'll have to make it ice stable, so our ice tables are coming back here. Um, and now at this point, you're going to uh, neutralize all of your strong base, and you'll have some weak acid left over. But if you remember from when we looked at buffers, right, we had, if we start off with a weak acid and we add a strong base to it, what are we going to get on the other side? A weak base. And so at this point, um, and in point two, if we neutralize all of our strong base, right, if we neutralize all this strong base, we're going to have some weak acid and we'll have some weak base left over. And so we're going to use the henderson hasselbalch equation here, the henderson hasselbalch pH is equal to pK plus the log of the base over the acid, in order to figure out what the pH is over here. This is called the buffer region, this whole section, from after you start adding some base all the way up to the equivalence point. Now, think about what happens at the equivalence point. That's when the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base. You're talking about the moles of the weak acid that you started with are going to equal the moles of the strong base. Oops, strong base, strong base. That's tricky. So um, at the equivalence point, now you can cancel out the weak acid and the weak base. All you have left over is, uh, I'm sorry, you, you cancel out the weak acid and the strong base. All you have left over is the, a weak base. And so now how do you find the pH of a weak base? not going to be 7, it's going to be greater than 7. Uh, so at this point you'll have to make a, uh, this is where it gets really, really tricky. So the equivalence point here is going to be very really tricky. Um, you have to make a weak base ice stable. So have a weak base ice stable over here. And then part A, you had a weak acid ice stable. And then you went to the henderson hasselbalch equation. Now at the equivalence point here you're going to have a weak base ice stable. And then after that, you're going to have excess, any, any point beyond that, you're just going to have extra strong base. So you have excess strong base, which is just like the last point on the other titration curve. So this is excess strong base. Where you find the moles of the acid, the moles of the base, figure out how much extra moles of base you have, divide it by the total volume, find the POH and the pH after that. And so I have the steps listed down here. Just, just review them one more time. So in the beginning, all you have is a weak acid. So make a weak acid ice table. Uh, and then solve for hydronium, negative log of hydronium gives you the pH. That should be pretty easy. And then you have the buffer region after that. So at any of this is, so part A is you're not adding any base. Part B, you start adding a little bit of a strong base. So you have to figure out how many moles of weak acid you start off with, how many moles of weak base did you just add. Remember how to find moles if they give you molar concentration and volume. You just have to multiply and make sure your volume is in liters. And then you're going to compare them. So you have a weak acid, a strong base gives you a weak base. You want to figure out how much weak base are you making, um, how much weak acid do you have left over, and then you can plug that into the henderson hasselbalch equation. Um, so you're going to use up all your strong base, uh, and all that base, all that strong base is going to go to make some weak base. And so however many moles of strong base you added, that's how many moles of weak base you will have. Um, and so if you subtract the weak acid minus weak base, that, that minus the strong base will give you your weak base. Oh, then to the henderson hasselbalch and you're Just remember, you're always plugging in the weak base and the weak acid concentration. And then at the equivalence point, that's where everything gets really crazy. You find the moles of the weak acid, uh, moles of your strong base, um, and then you find the moles of your, your weak base, which is you know, equal to the moles of your strong base, just like it was before. Um, then you want to find the, the molarity, so divide that by the total volume. Now you want to make an ice table. Uh, but since you have a weak base, you need a Kb instead of a Ka. So you're going to have to convert your Ka to Kb. You want to have the negative 14 divided by Ka equals your Kb. And then you want to find, since you just you, you solve for hydroxide, not for ion, hydroxide ion, find a pOH, negative log of hydroxide, will give you your pOH, and then 14 minus that will give you your pH. Um, after that, the excess base looks just like it did at the end of the previous ice stable, uh, previous um, titration. You find moles of acid, moles of base. We're going to have excess moles of base. We'll subtract the base minus the acid, divide by the total volume, uh, find a pOH and then a pH. So 
Part D is actually pretty easy. Part A is pretty easy. This is the hardest. The hardest part is going to be part C, choreographing football tonight. So let's do some of those.